Palmer got Offensive Lineman of the Week. Just wondered what you thought about the game he played, and maybe really, I know he's. I guess he had the hand injury earlier, but just what you thought about the season he's had there at a new spot. Yeah, I think I think the center position uh, has helped him. It certainly helped us. I think it took a, a little bit for him to get um, uh, acclimated to it, um, but he played a really physical game the other day uh he's comfortable in the offense that we ran and and i thought he played his most aggressive game i think it's going to help him uh in the nfl as well and you know the, the old line they, they've taken a lot of criticism maybe some justified some not but you know both said he understands that comes with territory and sec team how, how do you think you know maybe an older guy like Bo and and, and maybe the guys in general have handled all that well, i think they've handled it well i mean they want to play well and and, uh, um, you know, some, they, you know, if you have 300 yard passer, the quarterback's great. If you have a, uh, 150 yard passer, the line sucks. If you got a 150 yard rusher, the lines, you know, the running back's great. And if he real rush for 75, the line sucks. I mean, that's just part of the, that's part of being an offensive lineman. And for that matter, being an offensive line coach, but, it is the greatest position, in my opinion, to coach and to play. Uh, it just comes with the territory. I think they've handled it well. And then one more. Um, everybody talks about the tempo helping KJ, and, and obviously it did. But what do you think that did for for the offensive line? The the the, the change to Kenny and the, some of the things you guys you know went back to doing. Yeah, I think I think uh, having backup. You know, we talked about it maybe three or four weeks ago. But having somebody back you up, in other words, a, a guy, uh, they twist and and he goes behind you and having somebody there to pick him up, uh, getting out of uh, man schemes. You got to be, a, in my opinion, you got to be a better offensive lineman just if you're as, hey, I'm going to whip you by myself. And uh, that's not necessarily what offensive line plays about. It's about me and you are going to whip him by ourselves, And then one of us is going to go up to, to the second level. Uh, but we didn't have a lot of backup. Uh, in our game plan before, um, and uh, certainly having that backup allows them to play faster, uh, more physical, and I think it helped them. Thanks. Jackson. Hey, Sam. Uh, I'm just wondering, has maybe KJ had uh, a little bit of impact or just – a louder voice with offensive game planning, uh, you know, with Kenny uh, compared to maybe before his promotion or even in years past. I think he um, likes what he likes and doesn't what he does. You know, I, I think there's something to that. Um, he never has been a huge guy in, Hey, I like this several things. Uh, but he certainly has his say so on about five or six concepts that he really likes, and that's what we try to run. Okay, and uh, just curious if you know the injury to Ty, you know, on top of Luke, does that maybe force or motivate you guys to play some more four wide receiver sets, some more spread stuff like that? It felt like when you did go to that against Florida, you had some success with those formations. Yeah, it's certainly obviously in our game plan this week as well. We do believe in the other tight ends. I think Gums and Bax and, and uh, Sherman have all had a good week. Uh, and I think uh, Gums has played his physical ball, most physical ball Saturday and, and certainly this week, but um you know, you, you want to put your best talent on the field uh, as much as you possibly can. Now, there's obviously some runs you can't run without a tight end on the field, but uh, you doesn't mean you can't have a running game. Uh, but then you're talking about it going into a little bit more man schemes, uh, and I don't know that we're real comfortable with that right now. Thank you. Uh -huh. Hey, Sam, is this the part of the year where um, you take a little bit off of them, so to speak, uh, practices a little bit shorter? Or wh where are you in that in that scheme? Well, I still think we're trying to learn everything offensively. Um, so to be perfectly honest with you today, it's, this is kind of our second half. Um, last four weeks where we'll go half the practice in pads and half the practice in spiders which we, we don't do early in the year and, and, uh, and then 
uh, tomorrow will be all spiders, which this year we have done. Uh, you know, my first two years, we didn't go all spiders until on Thursday until after the bye week. Um, but we're seeming to have less physical injuries. And I mean, I know concussions are physical as well, but I'm, you know what I mean? Less bone breaks and ankle turns and all that kind of stuff. And for that matter, uh, concussions as well, uh, going to this style. To be perfectly honest with you, halfway through Wednesday's practice, I want to know who we're going to play with. And you can kind of, in shell, or excuse me, in spiders, you can kind of get a feel, okay, we got them. You know, this is who we have and things of that nature. So I like that part about it as well. The opportunity that presents itself to you guys, three home games uh, to finish out the year. And maybe what's, what's your take on heading into this stretch? with a chance to get bowl eligible. Yeah, I you know, I haven't talked about that to be perfectly honest with you cuz I know I know they know, you know. Um and I don't want if some if a hiccup came up on us, I don't want I don't want them to feel like the only goal that we have left is is the bowl. You know what I mean? So I think uh we're talking about um uh winning just on set just when a Saturday, when a Saturday, if we get to, you know, if we can get lucky enough to get to Missouri with a chance to win that game to go to a bowl, we'll, we'll certainly talk about it then. But uh, the motivation right now is to play our best football. Don't worry about the opponent and see if we can't go out and play our best football. Uh, and if we do, we'll have an opportunity to win any of the, any of our games. I got to think this is a big deal for Travis going up against the school he played for and coached at. Yeah. Uh, do you get any sense from him that he's he's jacked up to to do something this week? You know, I haven't sat down and spoke with him uh, specifically about that because I know he's you can tell. I mean, he's major motivated to do well. Um, we haven't talked to the kids about it yet, and uh, but um, you know, it's like anything. You know, when when we played Georgia, and I came from Georgia. I wanted you know I wanted to do well. You know. Not that I had any animosity. Shoot, I got the head coaching job at Arkansas from you know from Coach Smart. But you want to do well, and and uh, I'm sure that's what he wants. Marcus Woodson as well. You know, he I think he was over at Auburn. I can't help but think that you know Kenny came into the locker room and everybody was really focused on celebrating Kenny, and then maybe it switches over to the Travis thing. If you guys can win this one, maybe this is a a Travis Williams kind of game. Certainly would be awesome to find out, wouldn't it? Thanks, man. Thank you. Trey. Yeah, Coach. I was looking at the participation report, and you guys have played six freshmen who played four or more games already, or she mean five games. Uh, Ian Jafar's played fours, and he's the only guy that could possibly, I guess, burn his red shirt. Um, who's, who's that, Trey? Jafar. Yeah. Yeah, I've got him a four. What does it say about just this new landscape of college football with being able to bring in so many immediate impact players? And because it used to be like you play like half your freshmen usually and and redshirt the other half, but it's it's just a lot different now. Well, it is, and and to be honest with you, it's it's the cards everybody's dealt with, you know. But I I I believe that you know you you got to develop your program through young guys and all that. And, and obviously if you're playing each week and they're playing with older guys and you're trying to develop, then you, at times you run into, you know, losing, you know, and, and waiting to develop and all that times. And in this college landscape, a lot of times you don't have time to do that, you know, but, um, um, I, I would, I think it's, I think it's two part. I think, yes, exactly what you're saying is 100% correct. And then the way you recruit has certainly changed. You know what I mean? So you don't, I mean, you may play half your team, uh, Trey with six guys because you only signed 12 high school kids, you know, you know what I mean? So it's, uh, it's truly, uh, changed. Uh, I don't think necessarily for the better, but, um, uh, you know, we yeah, obviously have to adapt because we, we don't want to be, uh, you know, in this situation ever again. And, and, uh, so, um, we'll have to adapt to that a little bit. I think there might've been at least some interest on your guys' end with Ron Roberts, who's at Auburn now defensive coordinator, yeah. just comes from Delta state. I don't know what it is about Delta state. It's just like a weird, great coaching tree out of there, but hey, man. 
What are your thoughts about him and his philosophy and and what you guys can expect to see uh, Saturday? Well, very aggressive. They're going to be hard-nosed. I mean, that's what kind of coach he is. Uh, did a really great job at Baylor. Uh, I know at the end, what, whatever happened, happened. Happened, but I mean, you know, they had some really good years with Ron as the, the coordinator, have a high respect for him. Um, but he, he's going to bring a level of they're, they're going to play physical. You can see it on tape and be very, very sound and very, very well coached. And, you know, he's been in a long time. Uh, when I was uh, wanted to talk to him, I call a lot of people and he's highly respected um, in the in the coaching ranks. Thanks, coach. Coach. Yes, Sam, with uh, this past Saturday being Rocket's first game back, just how do you feel like he handled the workload that y'all gave him? And how has he responded physically in the days since that game, uh, you know, health wise and everything? Yeah, I mean, we're still watching him rep wise in practice, you know, just we don't want that knee swelling up and this and those. We want him ready. Uh, I thought he, I thought he uh, really ran as hard as he ever has. You know, made a great run on the 10 yard play there in overtime or 10 yard run on overtime. But um, we're watching him, which probably hurts him a little bit because we're not giving him the number of reps at practice that probably what he needs because he was out at a lengthy period of time. Uh, but uh, it certainly seemed to work out uh, Saturday for him. And I think he's a little better this week than what he was going into the game last week. And you mentioned on Monday and again earlier today about the this past Saturday being Gums' most physical, you know, performance mm -hmm. and everything. Could that maybe carry over and lead to him being more involved in the passing game, like being the what, what he did in the the physicality aspect? I I, I think that's a hundred percent great observation because uh, he's going to be on the field more. You know, if you're able to block and catch, um, you're going to have opportunities for more plays on the field. So. Uh, I would assume that that would be a fair and accurate statement. Uh, Coach, going back to the tight ends or just kind of feeding off what Andrew was talking about there, uh, what does uh, Shamar Easter need to do to maybe make in, uh, break into the rotation a little bit? And then just kind of behind, obviously not having Luke has and Ty Washington, what's the overall health of the, of the tight end room or who's left, I guess. Yeah. Well, those three I talked about, you know, with it being gums and Vax and, uh, uh, Sherman, uh, and Sherman, um, you know, we moved up Hunter Talley. Um, and so he's a guy and he knows the offense, you know, I'm high on Maddox Lassiter. Uh, I'm high on, on, uh, uh, Shamar Easter. Um, uh, Shamar, his, his, uh, only thing that's holding him back is just, you know, he played a lot of wide receiver, you know, so it would be the blocking aspect of his. And I don't think it'll look, he got here late, you know, or not, he wasn't an early, uh, guy and, uh, we're tickled to death that we have him and he's getting so much bigger and all those things. I think once he learns the offense, um, a little bit better and once he learns a little bit more about how to block he's going to be a really really good player for us thank you coach thank you daniel so with kenny being in the box uh upstairs in the box just who, who's kind of been that voice for the offense down on the sideline between drive to drive well uh you know coach kennedy uh, handles uh, a bunch of those guys with the tight ends. Obviously, Jimmy's down there. Jimmy's working that a little bit. Um, obviously, we have the wide receiver coach down there. But um, every time they come off, KJ and uh, and Kenny are on the headsets uh, together, you know, and, and talking along with myself a lot of the times. Um, but the voices down there probably for the bigs, it would be Cody, and for the skill would be more a little bit more with uh, Coach Smith. I assume uh, Coach Guyton felt comfortable and he's going to remain in the box upstairs long term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, he will. It, it worked out pretty good. So we'll see if we can duplicate it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Coach. Good to see y'all.